Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Uh, my name is Maurice Wingate, and um, on October the 7th, 2019, I underwent hip resurfacing, um, which is a type of hip replacement. Um, if you are watching this video, you probably did what I did, which was go online and Google hip resurfacing or hip replacement. And you saw some videos of people uh, talking about their journey. Originally, I wasn't going to do that, um, record my journey on video, but after thinking about it, I thought, you know what? If I wish I would have seen my video um, having undergone hip resurfacing. First off, I want to allay everybody's fears. Um, it went well. My doctor was Dr. Scott Marwin, and he did a superb job. Um, my story is perhaps different than yours. Uh, I was diagnosed with severe um, hip arthritis about 20 something years ago. And my doctor had suggested that the following Thursday, I should go in for a total hip replacement. And that scared the bejeevas out of me. And for about 10 years, I was inactive. I just kind of accepted the fact that I had this arthritis and it was going to just, you know, when I asked my doctor, what should I do? He said, buy yourself a cane. That was his attitude. Anyway, I did everything I could. After about 10 years, I, I got a warrior's mentality and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to let arthritis beat me. Um, but I'm not going to get a total hip replacement. It, when I, you know, you got to remember that 20 years ago, hip replacement surgery, I mean, it was very, it, it still is, but it was deemed very evasive and you would lose part of your femur and it only lasts about 20 years. It, you know, the, the, the normal thinking was that you, if you got a hip replacement like in your, 50s or 60s, you it would last about 20 years and um, you'd be about 80 years old anyway. And so, um, so anyway, my attitude at first was just to to take to deal with it holistically. So I I ex I, I stayed mobile. I walked. I went to the gym. Became a gym rat three times a week. I would. Um, I utilize something called PRP, which is plasma-rich platelet um, therapy, which actually did wonders. But it, um, so I survived. I survived not getting hip replacement for about 20 years. I eventually did some research, and I found out that there is an alternative now. Um, that's not as invasive as total hip replacement, and it was hip resurfacing. And the good thing about hip resurfacing is that it it was it was kind of uh, revolutionary in that it wasn't as evasive. You could go in. I was I went in on a Monday. I was out on Tuesday. Um, as I said before. Um, you know, I saw some videos online and people were were rejoicing in how quickly they just had the hip resurfacing and were back on their feet, you know, they didn't miss a beat. Um, that's kind of sort of true. Um, a couple of things I didn't think about. Uh, when you have surgery, as in any surgery, there are side effects. And one side effect of hip resurfacing or hip replacement is nerve 
issues, nerve damage, nerve, not, may it be damaged, it might be um, the nerves have been touched. So what happened, what happens is when they do the hip resurfacing, it, it, you know, they, they do cut through muscle and, and they have to go around nerves. If they touch a nerve, that nerve becomes inflamed and it takes a, a while for that nerve to get back to normal. And sometimes it takes, a, every nerve is different, every person is different. So sometimes it takes a week, sometimes it takes a month, sometimes it takes several months, and sometimes it takes a few years for your nerves to get back to normal. They do regrow and they do heal, but they're one of the slowest healing parts of your body. So with me, surgery went great. My hip, I felt no pain in my hip for the first time in 20 years, but I felt my foot felt like it was, if, if you ever have been out in the cold and your foot gets numb because you, know, you, you didn't wear thick boots or something and you get that numb feeling with tingly and it almost hurts, that's what I felt in my foot. And it, but my foot wasn't swollen. It was just my, apparently my nerves were inflamed and they were healing. Um, I was able to, one of, the, one of the things that they don't want you to get is something called drop toe. Um, now if that happens, it's, it's bad news. It means it's like your foot you lose the ability to control your f foot and it kind of f drops. So when you're walking, your foot drops and you, you can almost trip yourself, if that makes any sense. So that's, so the first thing when I told my doctor about this particular issue I was having, um, the first thing they did was check to see if my toes were, were were functioning and my toes were functioning. So they said, that's the good news. But the nerve issues are something that is just a unfortunate byproduct that can happen with hip resurfacing or hip replacement. I was one of those unfortunate individuals that got some nerve issues. And I'm talking to you on the 20, I'm oh, sorry, on the on uh, November the 13th, um, and my numbness is just starting to subside. I actually am now walking without the cane, um, but I was under the impression that you know, I was so gung-ho about being able to pretty much have the surgery and immediately return to to being the active individual that I always was. Today was actually the first time that I went to the gym. I got, I, I, but the, or the good news is it was, I got on the treadmill, which is something I used to love doing. But when the arthritis kicked in, I was unable to, to do the treadmill. I was able to do the treadmill today, for, but yeah, today, yesterday for 15 minutes. Didn't feel any pain at all. It was the greatest feeling in the world. Got on the Exercise bike, did another 15 minutes, no issues, no pain, no anything. It was an amazing feeling. Um, uh, so another thing I didn't think about was that since I was, I was diagnosed with arthritis 20 years ago, even though I, I, I learned to deal with some of the pain, I compensated how I walked to, to accommodate the pain that was not going away, it was getting worse and worse. Um, so once they did the hip resurfacing and my, my, so I had it done on my right hip. So for all these years, my left, I and mean, I'm a right-handed person, but my left leg was the, the strong leg. My right leg was the weak leg. And once they replaced or did the resurfacing, 
I came to realize how weak my right leg was from the calf to the thigh. Um, I've realized how weak my, that those muscles were. So, for example, most people, if they say, you know, stand on, a, hold on to something and get up on your tip, tippy toes. You know, you just push, you push on your calves and go up. I was able to do that. I was able to do that. And then you take one leg and you put it on the floor and you raise yourself up. I was able to do that. My right leg, I was totally unable to lift myself off the floor. All, um, so, because what happens is your strong leg compensates and you think you're lifting both, both, both feet or both calves are engaged. But actually, for me, it was the left calf that was engaged. The right calf was just kind of going along for the ride. It wasn't really doing its part. It's just like if you were doing, if you go in the, if you go in the, um, the gym and you, you're kind of using the machine that, that you lift your, both arms, um, you might find that one arm can do a certain amount of weight and the other arm can do another. So if you're lifting up 80 pounds, you think each arm is holding 40 pounds. It might be that your right is holding up 60 pounds and your left I mean, and the other side is holding up 20 pounds. So anyway, the other thing I didn't factor in was the fact that I would have to, my, my right side would have to learn how to be engaged again. Um, so subsequently, I, I, I was able to, you know, I, did, I went to physical therapy and I'm, and I'm able to walk, but I do have a slight limp. And the reason I have that limp is because my calf in my left leg is not that strong. And when, you, when you're walking, that one push at the end where you need your calf, I don't have that full capacity yet. So it gives me a limp. So now I have a different understanding as, in terms of, I've seen people with hip replacement or hip, or hip, only hip replacement actually. I've seen a lot of people have, still have a limp. And I'm like, why, why do they still have a limp? And I also, I know that with hip replacement, Sometimes you have the limp because they have, you know, there's a bigger chance of them not measuring the length of the femur. Um, and at, subsequently, you could have a limp even though you don't have the pain anymore. I now realize that you have the limp because your muscles have to be re-engaged and, and educated and built up to to carry you. So... So, you, so the moral of the story is, if you really want to get rid of the limp, you're going to have to really work at it like with, with some strengthening exercises. Um, that's one of the lessons that I've learned and one of the reasons why I said, you know what, let me make this video that kind of gives you the good, and the bad, and the ugly. Um, you know, the, the, one of the differences, the reason, one of the reasons why I chose um, hip resurfacing as opposed to hip replacement is that when I, when, I, when I read about hip replacement, there was a high percentage of everything going right with your first hip replacement. If you're an active individual, your hip replacement, your total hip replacement will sustain you for about 15 to 20 years. So the assumption originally was people get arthritis in their uh, 50s, I'm sorry, in their 60s and 70s. So you get the hip replacement, you, you know, and it lasts about 20 years, but now you're about 90 years old. So, I mean, I hate to put, hate to put it this way, but it's like, who cares? <laughs> you know, um, if, when you're 90 years old, you're not moving around anyway, so who cares? Um, with the second hip replacement, the percentage of things going wrong go up exponentially. And that scared me. So um, 
I'm happy that I'm happy that I waited and waited and waited for hip resurfacing to become legitimate and tested and viable because you let's say the hip replacement lasts the hip resurfacing lasts for 15 to 20 years and you get it when you're in your 50s so so now and you're an active person you know, you're always an active person. So now, um, it, you fast forward 20 years and you're in your 70s. Um, and now you need that second replacement. The problem with hip replacement, doing it for the first time, is that it, if you ever look at pictures of a hip replacement versus a picture of a hip resurfacing, you'll notice that the hip replacement is invasive. It, it, they utilize a lot of your femur bone. So you are, you are, the reason why there's a high probability of something going wrong in your second hip replacement is because during the first one, they took most of your bone. With hip resurfacing, they don't take most of your bone. If you look at the picture of a hip resurfacing, you'll see it's a it's just the socket and a, a plug where they've cemented it onto your femur, which means that now you've had the hip resurfacing. If 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 it doesn't, if it starts to wear out after 20 years and you're in your 70s, you can then get hip replacement because there's plenty of bone left from the hip resurfacing. It doesn't require as much of your leg. And as a result, you're able to get the second one, which you, you can't get hip resurfacing, but you can get hip replacement, which lasts about 20 years. So now you're in your 80s, your 90s, or whatever it is, and you're probably not as active, and you'll probably be okay with, with that. This, I mean, th th there's the possibility that you can only need the hip resurfacing, and that's it for the rest of your your life. Um, same thing with hip, with hip replacement. You, you might only need that one, but at least if you take hip resurfacing, if you don't need anything else, you're good. If you do need something else, you're able to get it without the, the high risk that comes with um, that, second, that second replacement. So, Long story short is I'm so happy that I waited to get hip resurfacing as opposed to hip replacement. I'm so happy that I didn't have the major side effect of serious nerve damage. The reason that reasons nerve damage happens, just so you know, is when they're cutting through the muscle and the bone, muscle, muscle and the nerves, if they inadvertently touch a nerve and they inadvertently have to move some move a nerve out to to make the, the proper incisions and the nerves react and they get fired up and they give off incorrect signals so in my case it feels like i'm wearing um uh it feels like I, my my ankle is wrapped and my foot is wrapped and it isn't it feels like my foot is swollen but it isn't it feel, when I put a shoe on, my left foot is fine. My right foot feels like I got, I'm, wearing, I, I'm wearing a size too small. It is getting better, but it, it's not as quick as I thought it would be. I'm fortunate that I work from home, so I don't have to do a lot of walking and taking the subway and this, that, and the other. Um, I can walk around the house barefoot which is more the most comfortable. I will say it's, this is a terrible inconvenience for me. But like I said, um, it, they, said it, it, they said one of the side effects, it's actually called post-operative neurophy. Neurophy is spelled N-E-U-R-P-H-Y. -E and... Um, uh, it gets better. 
like I said, it, it, when I when I first got it, it felt like my foot was on fire. Now it's you know w one part of my foot feels very sensitive to the touch. Um, my heel feels like it's got an extra layer on it. Um, but like I said, I went to a neurolog neurologist and it, 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 there's no cure for it. There's just uh, medication you can take to, to, to uh, reduce the inflammation, to reduce the pain. Um, but I still say I'm happy that the surgery was a success. I'm happy with uh, the surgeon. Um, Dr. Marwin. Um, so there it is in a nutshell. Uh, I, I felt it was good to make this video because every video I saw online, it, you know, this it was it, it was all roses. Um, it's not all roses. It does take some. It does take a little bit more. You have to work. Yeah, you, you have to work at your physical therapy to get back to where you were. You, you know, your muscles have been compromised, so even the strong ones are weak. Um, but in my case, you know, my calf muscles um, uh, had to be retrained. They were basically, hadn't had to do any work for two decades. Um, I don't know where anybody else is. Some people get arthritis and they immediately go and get the surgery. Some people have, have tolerated arthritis for years, and then they get the surgery. Um, I think I would venture to guess that most people fall into the category of tolerated for years until they had to go do it. So if, if you're that person, you're probably like me. And as a result, you, you're the leg that you, the arthritic leg is probably weak, more weaker than you thought it was. Um, and I, I'm also going to go out on a limb and say a lot of people who probably have that progressive limp probably didn't put the time in personal with, with a physical therapist to, or just on their own to strengthen their leg. And so they kind of developed this, this limp. You already have the limp. I, I mean, for me first, it was after having a limp for, for decades, you almost, your brain is trained to limp, even if there's no pain. I had, you know, the first thing I had to do was, my body had to like wake up and, and realize that there is no pain, so therefore technically there is no reason for you to be limping. Um, that improved, once I got that mindset, that improves my limp, but then there was a part that I couldn't improve, and that's the, in the gait, the last part of you, you walking is you engage your, your toe when, you, when you're when pushing off to get to the next step. And for me, that is very, very weak. So I can't get totally out of the limp until I strengthen that calf muscle. And so I'm like doing my Rocky imitation with the calf muscle. I'm probably gonna end up with a monster, a monster right leg and, and <laughs> And my left leg will be a mess, but that's that's the plan. Um, so I'm not going to keep talking and talking and talking. Um, hopefully, I've helped a little bit. Um, like I said, I wasn't going to do a video, but I, I felt that with all the hip replacement and hip resurfacing videos out there, um, somebody had to keep it real. Um, and that's as real as it gets. Uh, hopefully... You have a safe surgery if that's what you're doing. Um, hopefully, you would, if I were you, I would do a little bit of research on the, on the differences between hip re, hip replacement, total hip replacement they call it, and hip resurfacing, and make your make your own decision. Um, good luck, and uh, God bless.